Um, my name is Michael, and I am not a bad 90s TV show, nor am I taking kids on the block, but I will take you step by step through <laughs> my thought process. Yes, you can step by So, um, just first talk about Bush's policy. President Bush actually authorized federal funding for research of the 15 um, sub stem cell lines available in August 2001. At that point, we, must, we had stem cells, uh, embryonic stem cells to work with at that point. So Bush actually endorsed that. And then he also talked about the American population. Now, a poll happened by the Wall Street Journal and Harris uh, Group, and they found that 74% of the people thought stem cell research should be allowed. So you look at that, and then you also look, again, at the people who are actually um, the main components of it. So people who go to uh, in vitro fertilization, because I don't know what intro fertilization is. Um, so you go look at in vitro fertilization, and the people who are having that, they have to make excess embryo because you just want to be safe. You don't want to put all your eggs in one embryo, wait, all your sperm in one egg. Put that background. All right, that made sense. So when we look at that, um, now these. These extra embryo, which are stimulated and which are fertilized, they are just frozen, they're just waiting. And Dr. Kaufman, it's kind of a big deal, if you have heard of him, um, he actually says that um, all of these embryos uh, have actually, the, the people who, who technically own them, the, the parents, they want to use them for research purposes because um, they, hold on. Okay, yes. So, hundreds of thousands of unused embryos remain frozen, and many couples strongly wish to donate these embryos for potential life-saving embryonic stem cell research. They should have this option. Now, the government is responsible for um, doing what the people want, and since this really affects this collective group, and this is what they want, then, in that situation, it's the government's responsibility to fund this research, because that is what the people want. And... and <clears throat> adult stem cell research, it's been proven that adult stem cell research by nature does not have a wide scope of application. So because adult stem cells, they're kind of already developed into specific things, whether it's organ, whether it's tissue, etc., etc. So when you look at that, you're like, oh man, we could use adult stem cells for so many things, but hold on, they're already defined for certain things, so we cannot use them for everything. And while they may almost be the same, they're going to be much more genetically unstable, and that could cause even more complications than what the person already has. So, um, yes. So, and then the umbilical cord argument. So, can umbilical cord blood be used to test neurological, uh, <laughs> um, neurological diseases? In order to be useful for long-term treatments of neurological diseases, the stem cells in umbilical cord blood will have to efficiently replace the cells of the, uh, yes, efficiently replace the cells of the nervous system. A first step will be to direct umbilical cord blood stem cells to become functional nerve cells. There is no compelling evidence that this is possible. So, currently, we cannot use umbilical cord stem cells for um, what they need to be used for, which is to replace nerve cells, which therefore replace other things, which are very important to see So, um, so we look again at um, Erica Lloyd, who is a researcher. Um, if the donor and patient are genetically similar enough, the patient's body will reject the trans transfusion. The result will be fatal. So, pretty much with those two points, we look at umbilical cord stem cells, and that's like, yikes, that's a pretty big risk. People, let's see, fatal. That's not a word we use lightly. So when we look at that, it's it's not it's a risk reward factor, and it's definitely not worth risking for the probable not reward. If that makes sense. So when we look at destroy destroying life, now it doesn't really make sense to me when you have an embryo, and that embryo cell keeps creating cells. That we call it destroying life. Does anyone else? Okay, now in our body, we keep creating cells and we're alive. Now when we look at another cell, if it keeps creating life, even though it may not be its own individual life, it's still alive, correct? Yes. Thank you. Oh, one of you. <laughs> so, um, the question is, 
What is the most respectful way to treat these valuable embryos? We could either destroy them, and by that I mean actually destroy them and throw them away, or we could provide researchers valuable insight that could develop many life-saving therapies and cures for much, probably some of the greatest diseases we have. Um, so, when we look at that, I think altogether we should go, we should continue our policy because it does allow for more research and it does allow for more life currently to remain living. Thank you.